Hello everyone, welcome back to Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max and I'm joined by my colleague Ryan behind the camera. Both of us are electric vehicle owners and in this video, we want to make a guide for you on getting started for winter with your electric vehicle, whether you've just gotten one or you're interested in getting one and you're curious because you may have heard cold weather really affects batteries and consequently driving range in electric cars. However, the impacts are different. So we're gonna talk about which cars tend to lose more range in winter and which lose less, how to pick the right car basically for your needs then we'll talk about how you can actually minimize the impact of range loss in winter with some clever tips and tricks. And then lastly, let's talk about snow and ice because that typically comes with winter and what you can do to maximize traction and safety with your electric car. So consider this your starter guide for everything you want to know with EVs and winter driving. Let's get into it. Every electric car is gonna lose some range in winter, but some are gonna lose more than others. And generally speaking, cars with smaller batteries and shorter ranges are gonna be more affected by, well, just being really squeezed in winter. So if you have a long commute, then factor that in when you're choosing your electric car. You may want to get the one with an extended range battery. We'll link the study that Recurrent did, but they found, depending on the car, losses in winter anywhere from 10 to 30, sometimes even 40%. My colleague Ryan will talk a little bit about why some cars lose less range relatively in winter than others, but it's really important that you think about this. Uh, generally speaking, you know, it's, a lot of cars still have lots of driving range. My Polestar, which gets 230 miles normally, still gets just a little bit under 200 miles in winter. It's fine for me. Of course, the colder in the environment you live, uh, the more adversely it will be affected in winter. If you live somewhere where it's warm all year round, well, then you won't have to worry about this too much. But Ryan's going to tell you about his experience living in cold weather with two very different EVs. Okay, Ryan, so you you used to have a Chevy Bolt as your EV, right? That's right. That was the first EV I owned, and it was a great car. However, it wasn't the best for winter driving. It lost a lot of range in the winter. I saw sometimes as much as 40% loss in range with the Bolt. And, you know, that's pretty brutal. And now I currently own a Tesla Model 3, and I actually lose only about 20% of my range now, which is considerably less. I'm still losing a good bit of range, but 20% is a lot less than 40%. So it really comes down to the specific vehicle, the technologies that it uses, and how it can handle the cold, because not all cars are made equally, and some can handle the cold better than others. Mm -hmm. So with this analog, I think the things making the Tesla a lot better are one, let's just say heat pump. So Ryan, like, what is a heat pump? Uh, why, why are we seeing it in more cars and how is that helping? Without getting into too much detail and, and too much uh, technicality, a heat pump is essentially a different way to heat up air and it is a lot more efficient than using uh, other types of heating. Uh, it, it is extremely efficient and it can help improve range a ton and it's a huge factor and it's really important. A lot of new vehicles are starting to have them, especially EVs, but not every EV has it and generally speaking, those EVs without heat pumps do worse in the cold. Mm -hmm. Prominent examples, right? Like the F-150 Lightning, most trims of that don't offer a heat pump. I think the new Flash one does. All modern Teslas include a heat pump. Some earlier EVs, like my Polestar, didn't have a heat pump in its first year, but they added it in the second year. Other EVs have it as part of a winter weather package. So in addition to choosing an extended range battery, people might just want to choose a model that has a heat pump. And then Ryan, the software experience, the app, the like inbuilt navigation on your Tesla is a lot better. That also affects winter a lot. How is that? Certainly. I think one of the biggest things is just really good integration and really good use for road trips. So I'm always able to connect to the car, do what I uh, want and control it that way. And additionally for road trips, I'm able to put in destinations, get accurate estimates for what kind of state of charge I should arrive at. And it's able to plan out charging stops. And not only that, it will precondition the battery for me so that I have good charging speeds when I plug in. Nice. So basically improving the whole experience, it's more efficient, so you lose less of your range relatively, and you can take good road trips because you can be confident that you will get the charging speed you want when you're at a charger. Exactly. It's a combination of both hardware and software that makes a car good at handling cold weather and winter conditions. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about things people can do in any car to minimize the range loss. I've got three tips and tricks for minimizing your range impact in winter. The first is really just starting with your car warm, which you can kind of do 
by preconditioning your car or having your car have a set departure time. This ties into Ryan's point about software being such a key element for many cars. If you have a companion app or sometimes in your own screen in your car, you can configure a departure time when you leave in the morning where the car will warm itself up preemptively. And better yet still, you can do this without relying on the car's battery if it's already plugged in somehow. It doesn't even need to be to a fancy level two charging station in your garage. It could just be an extension cord uh, out of your wall outlet, worst case. Anything to have the car drawing power from the grid instead of its own battery is gonna result in, well, more energy available to you for driving once the car's already warmed up and it's just comfortable to get in a car that's already warm. So that's a great tip that you can follow. And also, when it comes to staying warm in the cabin using less uh, or lower fan speeds and lower temperatures is better because forced air uses a lot of energy compared to a heated steering wheel let's say or heated seats uh, so if your car has those use those surfaces more and be less aggressive about uh, those things so that you don't have to spend that energy this also ties into again preconditioning because if you've already warmed up your car then it's already you know nice and toasty the windows might be defrosted, it's ready for you. So it's great to just have residual heat already built up into your car. Lastly, for the long-term health of your battery, please, please avoid under being under 20% and leaving your car parked in the cold outside. That is the worst case scenario. It's bad for the battery health long-term. You may be looking at a battery warranty replacement down the road. So if at all possible, if you can't charge your car overnight, leave it comfortably above 20% so that it has excess energy to heat its battery as it may need to and so that it won't be unhappy. And then whenever you park somewhere, whenever it's possible, choose the indoor option uh, when it's winter so your car doesn't have to be in the cold outside because again, the battery does not like that in the long term. Some tips for just snow and ice conditions with electric cars. Get the right tires. Tires are so important. So I have all weather snow peak rated ones on my Polestar 2 here. Uh, depending on your climate, you may need you know different needs. You may want all season tires. Those are fine. All weather maybe, or maybe you need dedicated winter tires like some studded Nokians or something. It will depend on your climate, but budget this in when you're buying your electric car and consider it because they're not immune to the laws of physics. Uh, electric cars are powerful. They have lots of torque and they're very heavy, which is great actually for winter, but it does mean they really need the right kind of rubber to roll down the road. And specific to electric cars, right? Your range is going to be impacted. Of course, this affects fuel economy in gas cars. But because electric cars have less overall energy, you notice it more. So really just uh, consider that you might lose more range putting on a winter tire, but it's worth it for your safety. And then when it comes to all wheel drive and dual motor systems, which many electric cars have, you know, you can get the dual motor version. Those are great not strictly necessary for winter uh, because like my colleague Ryan, his Model 3 is rear wheel drive and he's still able to drive it in winter just fine. It's really more down to the tires. The all wheel drive or the dual motor functionality is helping you get going. It's not gonna help you stop. It's not gonna help you turn. Those elements are all down to your traction. So tires, 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 super important. They might hurt your range more. Lastly, let's talk about regenerative braking, which can also affect your traction. So as opposed to friction braking, which is just where you have a caliper rubbing against your rotor, you also in electric cars have that function where you can charge the battery by basically uh, reversing the current of the motors and uh, slowing them down. This is great. Uh, and many people are kind of afraid of it because they think, oh my gosh, what if that's gonna cause skids? Well, it can, of course, just like brakes, but it's typically tied into the ABS systems and the traction control systems your vehicle already has. So if your car has like one pedal driving where it very aggressively slows down when you lift off the accelerator, get used to being gentle with that, modulating it. Don't just lift right off because especially in vehicles like a Tesla, that's gonna be pretty aggressive with how strong it is. In some cars, you can actually reduce the amount of regenerative braking and sensitivity. Um, if you are the kind of driver who prefers to just use the brake pedal more, that is down to your personal preference. Teslas don't let you do that. They always force a uh, strict one pedal driving mode that is pretty strong. Lastly, however, in winter and cold weather, sometimes your regenerative braking is limited, meaning you won't have a one pedal driving effect and you'll have to use your friction brakes more. Well, your brake pedal is always there. So keep that in mind. Your car will give you a warning about this. but. In a Tesla specifically, where you may be used to this always on one pedal behavior, they have a very handy setting to apply friction brakes in lieu of regenerative braking 
uh, when it's cold and it's limited. So it makes up for that. That's a great setting to turn on. So those are some notes for winter and ice driving. So these are all the kinds of things to consider when you're getting your first electric car for winter. We've gone over picking the right one, how you can minimize your range loss, and tips for driving on snow and ice. So if you have more specific advice or want us to do more deep dive videos into any of these topics, we can do that here at Spec Guide. Keep in mind, electric cars, while they have downsides in winter, have really proven themselves to be great cold weather vehicles. There's a reason they're really popular in lots of Nordic countries like Sweden. Uh, however, there's always more to discuss and electric cars are always improving with winter and with their efficiency. So we're gonna keep you tuned to that here at Out of Spec Guide. Again, I've been Max and Ryan has been filming me behind the camera and chiming in with his experience. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.